the fact that the velocity of the source sheet is smooth is equal to lambda by 2 without the troubling singularity of a point source permits us to use flat plate source panel to model the surface of a 2D closed body. So, we extend the use of this source panel to flow about an aerofoil or even a circular cylinder. Consider a circular cylinder, we, div we divide this circumference up into a number of panels, flat panels and for each flat panel we assume a source strength. Once we assume a strength for this panel, we can calculate the effect of those sources from each of these panels to points at the center of the panels and make the flow velocity tangent. If they are n panels that we use, there would be n control points. So, by making the velocity 0, making the velocity 0 at this n, these n control points, we get n equations in n undetermined source things. And this system of equations can be solved to get the strength required for each of the pedals. We outline here the method applied to a aerofoil. We take a free stream at a velocity v naught and find out the velocity at a control point here and we set the velocity 0 and that will give us one equation in n unknown source strengths. This we repeat for every control point so we get n equations in n unknown source strengths. Choose the strength of the source panels such that the velocity normal to each panel vanishes. So we start with the profile of the aerofoil, and the flow approaches it with the velocity v naught and the angle of attack alpha. We divide the surface of the aerofoil into a number of straight source panels and we choose the midpoints of these control panels as control points. We number the panels and the control point 1, 2, 3, i, j up to m. So, there are m panels and m control points we have chosen. We next do the determination of the contribution of the to the normal velocity of each of the panels at each of the control points. The sum of these velocities plus the contribution of the free stream at each control point is equated to 0 leading to a system of m equations in m unknown source panel strengths. And how do we do this? We calculate the contribution of the ith panel to the velocity potential at the jth control point. That is, we find out del phi j i at the jth control point because of i is equal to lambda i, the strength of the ith panel divided by twice pi, integration over i of ln r j i into d s i where r j i is under the root x minus x j whole square plus y minus y j whole square, where x and y could be x i and y i. The total contribution of all the panels at the jth control point is 
this submission for all the eyes. The total contribution of all panels at the jth control point was obtained as summation i is equal to 1 to m delta i divided by twice pi integral over i, the panel ith panel of ln r j i d s i. The normal component of velocity induced at the jth control point by the source panel is then obtained by taking the derivative of this potential with respect to n j. The above result results in a singularity in integration over the jth panel itself, the contribution of which has been evaluated earlier as lambda j pi 2. So, we eliminate the jth panel from this sum and add lambda j by 2 separately. The boundary condition requiring vanishing of normal components of the velocity of the jth panel becomes lambda j by 2, the contribution of jth panel plus the contribution of all other panels except i is equal to j plus the contribution of the free stream v naught cosine beta i should be 0, the normal velocity should be 0. This is a linear equation with m unknown source panel strength. There are a total of m such equations, one for each control points and these can be solved simultaneously. Now, as was said earlier, then the net source strength for a closed body must be 0. So, summation of lambda i over i from 1 to m should be 0. We have not used this equation earlier. So, this can be used as an independent check on the accuracy of the calculations performed. Once lambda j's are obtained, we can write the composite stream function and plots it can do to get the streamlines of the flow. To calculate the pressure distribution, we need to know the tangential velocities at the control points which are obtained from this expression. Then the coefficient of pressure at the jth control point is nothing but 1 minus vj by v naught whole square. This panel method is used very often and lots of programs have been developed with this. One such implementation in MATLAB is available at this reference. The viewers are encouraged to visit this site which is a MATLAB sharing source and obtain a, a, a rather small source panel method program which can be used to solve for any closed body. The inside can be replaced by the solid body and the calculated streamlines are very close to what is obtained. Of course, there is no restriction of alpha on this method. If we use larger alpha, we get a flow like this. We will expand this. You see here, the stagnation point has moved to a point above the trailing edge of the aerofoil. This results in a larger, large acceleration at the trailing edge, a situation which is not physically tenable. You cannot have infinite velocity there. So, this breaks down. There is no circulation about a source sheet we have calculated earlier. And so, if we calculate the circulation 
in the flow that we obtain, we will find that circulation is 0 and the lift per unit length of the airfoil obtained would be 0, whatever be the angle of the attack. So, this method cannot predict the lift by itself. As we have seen, the trailing edge is this, the flow goes around the trailing edge acquiring an infinite velocity at the rear point. The stagnation point moves up, so there is flow which is slowing down in this region and in this region. This results in separation. A famous scientist by the name of Kuta produced a theorem which says that the actual flow has a circulation which is non-zero, which predicts a non-zero lift and that circulation can be predicted. The actual physical circulation in a real flow can be predicted by imposing on this solution a vortex strength such that this stagnation points moves to the trailing edge. As you increase the value of gamma, the circulation, this trailing, this stagnation point shifts downward. And at one particular value of gamma, this stagnation point is sitting at the trailing edge. And the Kutta condition states that the actual flow is one in which the gamma is exactly equal to the required circulation to make the rear stagnation flow at the trailing edge. To repeat, the aft stagnation point here with zero circulation, I change the value of circulation and this, start, this point starts moving down towards the trailing edge. At one specific value of circulation so superimposed, that is on the potential flow that we obtain without the circulation, we keep on adding a vortex. And when the vortex strength reaches a certain value, the stagnation point is right at the trailing edge. If I add more of circulation, the stagnation point would move down the bottom surface. A body with a sharp trailing edge which is moving through a fluid will create about itself a circulation of sufficient strength to hold the rear stagnation point at the trailing edge. This is the Kutta condition. So, what we do is we predict the lift by introducing a vortex sheet in much the similar manner as we did with the source sheet. This vortex sheet is now laid along the camber line of the aerofoil. The thickness of the aerofoil does not contribute to the lift. So, to the first approximation of the flow, we can forget about the thickness and worry only about the camber line. We imagine a vortex sheet of strength gamma s on the camber line, calculate the potential at point x, y. Because of this vortex sheet of strength that varies like gamma s, the velocity u on any location s can be determined by differentiating phi with respect to x. There is a discontinuity of y is equal to 0 and we get u the horizontal velocity 
slightly above the Kimber line as minus gamma by 2 and slightly below as gamma by 2. And this gives us the velocity or the Kimber line. If the aerofoil is thin, make the camber line a streamlined by imposing the condition that the velocity is tangent to it, that is Vs due to vortex sheet at the sheet location is equal and opposite to the vertical component of the free stream velocity. The vertical component of the free stream velocity. So that V0 into alpha plus dy by dx is the vertical velocity predicted by this vortex sheet. Techniques have been developed to obtain gamma s as a Fourier series with Kutta condition that translates to gamma l is equal to 0. With these we can find out the flow about a cambered aerofoil. And the lift on such an aerofoil is minus rho free stream velocity times the total sheet strength, vortex strength, gamma. The pressure distribution can be calculated there. This shows the pressure distribution about one cambered aerofoil. Thank you very much.